Good afternoon. A 16-year-old girl has died and another girl is in a very serious condition after a bomb blast in southern Italy. The explosion outside a girls' school in Brindisi injured six other people, including students. Good evening and welcome to the programme. You're watching London Tonight. It's six o'clock. It's polling day and you've got just four hours left to cast your vote. We've lots to get through between now and 6.30. Here's the team with details of what's to come. And Emma is still at City Hall for us now. Emma. Well, Nina, it's amazing to think, isn't it, that that flame in that small, golden, unassuming looking lantern will tonight become an integral part of what is sure to be a spectacular opening ceremony. And uh, at the moment, we believe it's still here at City Hall, but in the next two hours, it will be conveyed to the Olympic Park and then carried into the Olympic Stadium. By who? That's the big question, of course, much speculation about Sir Steve Redgrave being the one to do it. But one thing is for sure, uh, tonight there will be 8,000 torchbearers out there who will be watching the opening ceremony, either in the stadium or at home, watching it on television. And they'll be thinking to themselves, I was part of Olympic history. I helped that flame get there. Weren't they just? Emma Walden at Towbridge for us. Thank you. Emma Walden joins me now from the march. Emma, give us a, give us a clue on numbers. How many people turning out, do you think? Well, this march began around half an hour ago and as you can see, still thousands of people streaming past me here beneath Hungerford Bridge on the embankment, just one of two start points for today's march. In sentencing Morella Iona, his honour, Judge Greenwood, said, I have to bear in mind that you were in a position of trust. You were caring for people with dementia who could not think for themselves. He went on to sentence her to three years imprisonment. As the Queen arrives here at Hatfield House in Hertfordshire, a truly memorable moment for the crowds who've gathered to congratulate her on her Diamond Jubilee. Whilst here, the Queen will plant a commemorative tree, something permanent for generations to come. Five weeks to go, Zara. How are the nerves? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's still, with horses, it's still a long way to go. And... A truly memorable moment for Cameron Fraser as he carries the torch onto Windrush Square here in Britain. 33-year-old nominated for his sports charity work. So what does Sir Steve Redgrave hope these youngsters will take away from this? Well, the best place to ask him was, of course, on the water. It's about of, of them going back and telling their friends of what they've done and, and uh, other people and, of course, having you down and, and, and covering it as well. I thinking, well, I want to have a go at that. So more keen rowers, but what about the wider legacy of London 2012? Well, Sir Steve hopes the spirit of volunteering will remain. Go back to your local club. When you start to see the commercial applications of what they've created, it becomes clearer why the government view this as a key investment for the UK's economy in the future. the giant squid, eight metres long and just one of the very unusual artefacts not normally on public display that visitors to the Natural History Museum will be able to see as part of their Science Uncovered event. Jasmine Lowson, what I call her Yasmin for, she'll slap me when I it's say her later on. No, it's because you did my glasses earlier. had fallen on there. <laughs> right. That was very good. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. And that's it. Romilly Weeks will be here with all the day's news and sport at six, including the battle for promotion between West Ham and Blackpool, a preview of Chelsea's Champions League final tonight in Munich and the Scottish Cup final between Hibs and Hearts. For now, though, have a very good afternoon. Goodbye.